This video contains content that some might find disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Human curiosity can take you as far as your passion can go. But what if it takes you farther than you expected? Deeper into unknown territory. Tonight, our curious narrator finds herself alone, all the way up a snow-filled Russian mountain in search of a beautiful and unique creature, the Lunar Moth. I'm Ryan Bergara, and this is Are You Scared? A show where I tell my friend Shane Madej the internet's scariest stories. So lock your doors, turn off those lights, and let's see if we can make it till the end of the night. Mothman. Apparently, the winter roads leading up to the cabin were never truly clear. The old Russian lady had informed me this as I was handed the key to the rental house she had once called her home. I would have to be prepared to be stuck for a few days in the little yellow home, explained the woman who looked well into her 90s. Like at any rental place, the old woman gave me some rules to follow, but one of them stood out. Turn off all the lights and shut all the windows after 10, or else Mothman would come. I do want to point out here that uh, it doesn't say or else Mothman will come. It says or else, and then it's in Russian. Apparently there's a Russian pronunciation of Mothman. Motyok. Motyok. That's probably a recording of the old lady saying it. Maybe. I'm excited to see Mothman come through this door, like an old sitcom moment, like Kramer walking into people, Seinfeld's uh, place, people yeah. clapping. Yeah. I like any story that starts with a miserly old crone warning about something. I tried asking her about this, but she just told me to do it. Apparently, he was the reason she no longer lived there full time, as Mothman had begun to show up after her husband died. I laughed, assuming her mention of the Mothman was a joke, as I was there to study the mysterious lunar moths. Yeah, I'd laugh. On some of our previous programs, I've had a habit of laughing at people's misfortunes when they phrase it in a funny way, and uh, it's gotten me in trouble. So I could see myself laughing at this woman. I know the incident you're talking about. Yeah. I don't believe the phrasing was particularly funny. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I think you're just twisted. There's something wrong with your brain. I'm laughing just thinking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot is known about the insects but some hikers had found a frozen specimen in the mountains surrounding Moscow earlier that winter, barely a mile from this little cabin. There were folk tales that claimed these moon moths would come out under the full moon, fluttering around on their dark wings. The full moon was in three days, and I needed to be ready. As the woman warned, the roads snowed over the day after I arrived. I had packed plenty of food and coffee, so I was prepared for my own little lonely isolation. I have never been an extrovert anyways, preferring my own company over others. Makes sense for someone who studies bugs for a living. Is this you? Did you write this? I was actually gonna jump in and say that moths are one of the few insects slash bug, outside of maybe earwigs, that I don't like them. They got those dusty wings. I don't like the look of them, the way they bat against light bulbs and yeah. screens. I like it when they land on a screen and then from the inside you can flick the screen and oh, send it on fun. a little journey. Yeah, that's fun. I hate moths. I gotta say, this does sound like you though. Everything so, else does, it does sound like in, me. Packs yeah. plenty of food and coffee. Doesn't really talk to people. Uh, and someone who studies bugs for a living. I would study literally any other bug quite happily, yeah. I used all my strength to push the door open against the snow that morning. After chopping some wood, I went back inside and started working, coffee next to me. My work that day was mostly in preparation for the next evening. I had a bit of reception, which unfortunately meant my ex was able to send me a few messages as I sipped on my coffee. I'd met him last May when working on a rare larva that let out bioluminescent light and turned into the most beautiful butterflies. He was a zoologist, recognized my equipment and started chatting me up. I'm a bit of a warm guy myself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you are like a warm lady and then another guy is like, I dig warms too. Yeah, I like when it rains and they all come out and dance. <laughs> <laughs> you ever eaten one? 
Yeah. I bet you had you sick. Live. <laughs> Come on, man. I was out fishing with some friends, and uh, we were joking about it. And the funniest thing to do in those situations is just be like, yeah, and just eat it, you know? That's a fun thing to do if you want to freak out your friends. You're saying this with the cadence of just something that people do. Like, yeah. uh, people don't do that. People have been surviving on bugs for as long as men walk the earth, you know? That's a, that's a thing you do. I bet you would take a bite of that coffee cup. Well, that would break all my teeth. Just thought you were hardcore. After a few months of dating, he started getting clingy, and I had to break it off. He was upset. Normally, if you flee to Russia without a warning after a breakup, most people would understand you are looking for some time alone. Not this man. His texts asked where I was, and when I didn't reply, made it clear that he didn't like the fact that I left. Not at all. Right before I blocked him, the last message I saw was, I am coming. Can't be doing it. Respect the space. Respect the space. That's a good lesson to learn here. If you, ever break up with somebody, if you ever break up with somebody and flee to Russia, it's not okay to follow them. I felt a pang of worry, but hoped my paranoia was wrong and I would be alone for the rest of the trip. Even if he somehow got to Russia, from what the lady told me, when it was snowed in, the only way to get to the cabin was on foot. I ended up falling asleep earlier than normal, staring at the old yellow tapestry with white flowers spread across the bedroom wall. As my eyelids were closing, I could have sworn I saw one from the corners peeling upwards in the dark. But it was past 10 p.m., and I remembered the old lady's warning not to turn on any lights. Not wanting to disrespect her on that first night, I found myself following the rules given to me. Oh, cause it's a moth. <laughs> yeah. I guess I didn't know that Mothman behaved like a mop. Like, I know he flies. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I didn't know he I... was drawn to, like, porch lights. I thought that he just looked like a moth, and that's Same. why we called him Mothman. Yeah. And, you know, other than that, there's really no relation, because Mothman, completely different being. Flies, makes weird noises, has an excellent ass. Yeah. The idea that you could just turn on your little flashlight on your iPhone and he'd just be transfixed by it just uh -huh. <laughs> is kind of funny to me. Yeah. The next day, I got dressed in what felt like a million layers and stepped out to set up some moth traps. Despite the snow, I was told that Russian mountaineers were always hiking in the area, so I didn't think twice when I saw footsteps close to the cabin, until I had noticed a pair had stopped outside one of the cabin's windows. Peeping toms are scary enough as it is, but especially when you are all alone in the middle of unfamiliar mountains. I understood now why the woman advised keeping the lights off and the windows closed. I could think of fewer things scarier in that moment than a lost Russian hiker stumbling upon my cabin in the wilderness at night. I hope it's a real Mothman and not some psychological horseshit, you know? I don't like it when the monster is in the mind. What's Give also me... with this old lady, though? She said at the beginning... Yeah, what's her deal? She said, turn off the lights. Oh, turn off the lights past 10 p.m. Maybe she's like, otherwise, giant Mothman will... He'll come and try to romance you. <laughs> crash through your window and just start humping your lamp or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they fuck while they're flying? We might have to look that up after. For science. I went back inside and tried to get warm under a blanket as I listened to the fire crackling. It was idyllic and I almost forgot about my ex and the footprints outside the living room window. Almost. Suddenly, my phone lit up. It couldn't be my ex. I'd blocked his number, right? While it wasn't him, it was about him. My colleague was texting, saying my ex had shown up at my workplace, demanding to know where I'd gone. When no one would tell him, he stormed out in a burning fury. It seemed my ex still did not know where I was and would hopefully never find out. Okay, so this is how moths have sex. I have a picture. Okay. <laughs> You fucking god damn it, dude. <laughs> he did it again. He showed me that awful image from Smile Dog. I guess this is, um, I don't know how I fell for it. Anyways, her ex showed up to her work. There was footstep, footprints outside of her window. Okay, yeah, scary, footsteps. That's scary in the, in the snow, in the snow. Let's just move on. I decided the best way to get my mind off the fact that my ex was pestering co-workers about my whereabouts was a nice bath. 
There was no TV and no Wi-Fi, so my plan after the bath was to watch some episodes of a procedural show I downloaded for my flight to Russia. As I soaked in the bathtub, I looked at my hands and noticed some skin on my wrinkled fingertips was peeling off, the result of having to take my gloves off to fix a trap in the cold earlier that day. I began to pick at it and looked around, fully noticing just how yellow this house was. It wasn't just the outside, but all of the interior was yellow as well, like the whole place was designed to radiate light. I don't like that. Oh wait, is she like in a giant Mothman trap essentially? It seems like it. Or is she just like staying, like is Mothman like renting out his house as like an Airbnb and she's just staying in the house? It's possible. Yellow I find to be one of the most off-putting colors inside a home. So the thought of staying in a yellow house is deeply upsetting to me. What is it about it that's off-putting? I don't know. I've, I've been told that it's like a, a pleasant color, that it should make you feel good things, but it doesn't. It really doesn't. I don't like it. The one part of the house that had no yellow was a giant painting hanging in the living room, visible from the tub through the open bathroom door. It was of the Russian mountains surrounding the cabin in the springtime. Beautiful flowers were sprouting and the lush green hillsides seemed to go on forever until they met a giant dark cloud swirling at the top of the mountain. Except it wasn't quite a cloud, more like an inflated mass like a monster trying to suffocate the top of the mountain. It's a cloud, you fucking yeah, dork. Yeah. If you walk up to me and you're like, you see that in the sky? It's a, an inflated mass, like a monster trying to devour the sun. I poke them in the eyes. That's someone, what you do? If someone came up to me and said that. I don't know why, I, I don't would know about you, the licking of the like finger. A... I wouldn't even do it like in a mean way. They'd be like an inflated mass devouring the sun. <laughs> Ah, did you just poke me in the eyeballs? I blinked and looked away from the painting. How long had I been staring at it? The water now felt cold, as if I'd been sitting there for hours. I looked at the water in the tub and gasped. The soapy water was beet red, like blood. I lifted my hands out and they stung in air. Blood was oozing out of my fingertips. In my trance while looking at the painting, I'd picked most of the skin clear off the tips of my left hand. Around 6 p.m., after draining the tub and bandaging my fingers, I started watching my show. It had been already dark for a while. The sun sets so early out here. And after only a couple episodes, I felt myself fading. So I turned off the lights and passed out. Maybe it was the atmosphere making me this tired falling asleep around eight after a few cups of coffee was unusual for me. Is this person turning into a moth? Oh shit, that'd be good. Because that, maybe that's why the house radiates light because it's like they've unknowingly attracted to it because they were in the early stages of mothhood. But didn't they like book an Airbnb or something with this woman? They, she, they met with some creepy Russian lady. And maybe she's like you, except older, and she just loves weird Oh, she makes moth shit. people. Maybe. I have no idea. I think she's going to turn into a moth. That's what I think. In Russia, Mothman is, is you. I didn't sleep for long, though. After a few hours, I was awoken by three sharp knocks. At first, I couldn't tell where it had come from. Was it the bedroom window? The one inches above my head? I didn't dare to move or breathe. Instead, just laying wide-eyed, staring into the yellow wallpaper, feeling my heart race in my chest. Suddenly, a second round of knocking. This time, I realized the sound was coming from the living room window. Three knocks, slow and rhythmic. Behind it, I could hear the wind howling outside. Then, to my dread, the sound of footsteps crunching through the snow moving calmly outside the house walls. It sounded like the steps were going away from the cabin, and thankfully, I didn't hear any more knocks after that. After calming down and resisting the urge to turn on the lights, I eventually fell asleep again. You do the, the little moth noises, I'll do the knocks, okay? <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, come on. Yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> that next morning, I got up and looked out at the tracks of whoever had knocked on my cabin. They'd come from the same general direction as the previous set, and went off the same as well. 
This cabin must be a landmark along some sort of late night hiking route. It made a little sense, the piece of evening lit by the nearly full moon. It must actually be a beautiful hike, probably peaking that night as it was to be the full moon. Honestly, the idea of running into a hiker while I was out waiting for moths that evening appealed to me. I wasn't having a great time alone in the cabin, especially after what happened the night before. But I also recognized that capturing this moth might be my big breakthrough. It was comforting knowing I would only have one more night in this place. I peeled all my skin off. It would be nice to make a friend. <laughs> You run into a stranger on the trail. They're like, I really like mods. Are you being friends with them? Nah, that's an immediate nut punch. It's a nut punch? And then go in the opposite direction. Perhaps even throwing some dirt in their face. Like, I've never done that. I've always wanted to throw sand in someone's eyes. Yeah, me too, actually. Weirdly. Well, we should do it to each other. <laughs> <laughs> Most of that day was spent putting up cameras to focus on areas where I didn't have traps. Hopefully, even if I didn't physically capture any lunar moths, I might be able to film them on camera. I've never been a technology geek, so cameras always take me hours to set up. Inside, I prepped some more and made some extra strong coffee, hoping to guard against falling asleep early. But by early evening, the strategy wasn't working. The silence of my surroundings, coupled by the warmth radiating from the fireplace, meant my eyelids were drooping at 8 p.m. again. I needed a jolt, so I opened the window, hoping a blast of fresh air would wake me up and freshen the air in the cabin that was starting to smell a bit too much like my sweaty snow gear. As the skin on my face tightened against the cold breeze, I let my mind fantasize about the lunar moths. It was no guarantee I'd see one. Few people ever had. But still, I couldn't imagine leaving this cabin not having seen them, with the moss only relegated to my dreams. Do you have any annoying hobbies? I don't think so. I don't have any hobbies. Yeah, you do, I'm sure. Like, I'm sure you do some weird shit at home. I don't. I just watch prestige collect, television. Collect carpets or something? No. Basket weaving? Uh-uh. You're telling There's me There's too much TV to watch. I don't have time for hobbies. What do you, you just go home and you just... Turn on TV. I it? have to. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm out of the conversation. That makes sense. You had, you do consume more content than anybody I know. I must. I love content. And I love television. It's the best thing that was ever invented. Suddenly, my eyes opened. I'd fallen asleep. I looked at the ancient grandfather clock in the corner of the room. 10.30 p.m. A roaring panic filled my brain. I turned to the living room window. It was wide open. The yellow embroidered curtains danced in the cold Russian breeze, and my ears were filled with the loud howling of the wind through the trees outside. By now the room was close to freezing, but I still felt a distinct chill running down my spine as I got up. My attention fixated on the open window just on the other side of the room from me. Looks like they're gonna die now. Are you scared? See you next week. <laughs> As I reached out to grab the window, something fluttered past my vision and landed somewhere behind me in the yellow room. At first, I thought it was a leaf, but as my eyes locked onto the reading table next to the old, worn-out armchair, I saw it was a small moth. I gasped, immediately taken aback by the dark pattern of its wings, a pattern I had never seen before. It was like deep blue ink swirling on a backdrop of jet black oil. Yet there was also a radiance to it, as if it had absorbed the moonlight and was reflecting it back, tiny dancing stars on a field of darkness. It was the long rumored lunar moth. Drawn to the light from my yellow cottage and settling inside thanks to a carelessly open window. The dumb idiot. I study moths for a living. I'm here to see moths. I opened up my window. I saw a leaf fly past my face. Wow, that looks like some kind of flying leaf. That's true. It's a moth, you fucking idiot. I guess if you are, if your job is to be a moth expert and you can What is that, some kind of leaf? And you can't discern between a moth or a leaf. That is pretty fucking wild. No wonder why you have to study in Russia in a cabin by yourself. Well, this is also a person who came to Russia to look at moths and then fell asleep. <laughs> on the one night they weren't supposed to. They couldn't crack it in America. Every time they saw a moth, they just thought it was a leaf. Maybe they've just been staring at leaves their whole career. 
What a weird moth. My attention was pulled away only after I felt something small and soft hit my hand. Another lunar moth, this one bigger than the one on the reading table. I wanted to gently guide it inside, to close the window and take its beautiful insect form into the living room where I could properly assess it. I didn't need the cameras or the traps after all. The moths were coming to me. I peered out the window as I went to close it and gasped. There, outside, was a giant storm cloud of moths, undulating and tumbling slowly. At first, it would move towards the moon, then towards the cabin, as if confused which light source it was drawn to more. I had never seen moths swarm like this, and even with the cold wind blowing against my face and through the window, I couldn't stop staring at the insects. Do they want to fuck this <laughs> I think this person wants to fuck this moth, dude. This is so weird. There's got to be fan fiction out there about people having sex with Mothman. Oh, Mothman's sure a Mothman, very erotic, Mothman, yeah. a very erotic, maybe Once the again, most erotic cryptid. If you don't know what we're talking about, look up the statue of Mothman, particularly from behind. Then I saw it, inside the pulsing cloud of moths, seemingly gliding along the ground. I could just make out the shadowy outline of a figure wearing what looked like a long coat. It was almost floating as if the moss were keeping it slightly above the ground. All the while, more black moss seeped out from the collar of its coat like a broken faucet. The moss seemed to be coming from this figure. The cloud of flittering moss and the figure inside were moving towards the cabin. I began to panic. I reached out to grab the window, but it would not budge. I threw my whole body into it, once, twice, and finally a third time, slamming and locking the window just as the cloud of moss hit the glass. I like the idea that they only start to panic when he moves toward the cabin, like they're just looking out the window like, hey, there's a big cloud of moths and a floating man in a trench coat in him. Hmm, it's not something you see every day. Wait a minute. Are they moving this way? I better shut the door. Or get ready. <laughs> what is that? What are you getting ready for? What do you got? Oh, he's put on oh a, sex, sex, he's sexy. Put on like sexy, a robe yes, or yes, something. Yes. Maybe put on some like a record. Yeah. Pour a glass of wine. Yeah, a little Al Green. I peered through the glass, trying to get a better look at the person inside this mass of moss. But the insects were flittering with such fury against the window that I couldn't make him out. In fact, it almost looked as if he didn't have a head at all, as though the moss were his eyes and ears. By now, the moss were aggressively hitting the glass, creating a horrible noise of glass starting to crack. I stumbled back and looked around the room for anything to fight with. There was nothing. Then I realized it, the light. The moss were drawn to the light of the cabin. The tapping had now morphed into an almost knocking, which then became firm slamming. The moths were crashing in unison against the window. The memory of the old lady's words crashed through my brain. Turn off the lights after 10. I saw the light switch just a few meters away. As I dove for the switch, the sound of glass breaking rang in my ears. It was too late. The moths were inside. I swatted at the bugs swirling around my head while the shadowy figure at the center of the storm cloud began to climb through the window. Oops. Well, I'd just grab a blanket, right? To put it over the moth man? Well, I'd put it over myself, roll under the couch. Why, is, why would you do that? I don't think they can do much. They can, I guess, like cartoonishly form a giant hammer and like sledgehammer you. Yeah, I guess is this like those fish in Finding Nemo that's they're forming like a, I think a moth so. person? Yeah. Or like, you know, when kids put themselves in a trench coat to make themselves look bigger like a human? That could be. This is basically that, I suppose, right? I think so. There's no muscular strength. It's still just a bunch of moths Flitter taking a shape. Yeah, just Flitter a Flitter Flitter flittering, Flitter flittering wings that are yeah. like pretty delicate. Yeah. I realized I had only one hope, to get away from the light. Without pulling on my boots, I ran for the door and into the darkness. I trudged through the snow, almost up to my knees until I was 100 yards away. Wait, what the fuck? Their only hope was to leave the cabin? Their solution when running away from a giant moth-like creature is to go into the snow at night? I'd lock myself in the bathroom. Yeah, and then turn off the light in the bathroom. Shivering from the cold in the moonlight, I looked back at the cabin. Through the windows, all I could see was swirling darkness. It was eerie, and yet it looked beautiful in the moonlight. 
I turned around and kept running. I don't know how, maybe through adrenaline, but somehow I made it to the nearest town. All the lights were off, just the full moon lighting up the snow. I understood why. Turn off the lights after 10. So, are you scared? I gotta say, this version of Mothman, pretty underpowered. Yeah. I don't think they've done a service to Mothman here in terms of making Mothman be as badass as I don't, he can be. I don't know if this Mothman is aware of his capabilities. Maybe he's just got low self-esteem, because the one in America is like doing terrorism, He's, right. blowing he's, he's blowing up bridges. He's blowing up bridges. I don't think he had anything to do with 9-11, but he's, he's, we should look into that. Don't. Number, number two is, is traveling interdimensionally. That's right. Psychic warfare. He's climbing out of fridges. And terrorizing like teenagers while they, like, do hand stuff in cars That's out right. at Lover's Lane. And this one's just like, well, I hang out with a lot of moths. Well, that story was written by Macon, so thank you for submitting that uh, and your twisted little version of the Mothman. Once again, America, we got a kick-ass Mothman and we should all be very proud of who we've got here. That's He's right. a great guy. He'll kill you. He'll kill your He'll ass. He'll fucking kill you. Ha, 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 ha.